Hello friends and welcome to a not vlog. <laughs> I asked and so many of you said you wanted to see my pattern collection and storage because I have to adjust that because it's a mess right now. <laughs> so I am going to do that video for you right now. I made a huge mess downstairs <laughs> taking some sort of Marilyn Monroe shot of all my me in all my patterns. <laughs> so it's trashed. I'll show you what that looks like right here. In a rare shot of my living room. <laughs> <laughs> I spread all my patterns out on the floor to take this thumbnail for this <laughs> and now I have to pick all these up. Oy vey. So I have a little bit of a mess on my table. I need to go ahead and clean that up so I have somewhere to put all these patterns so that me and my husband can move them upstairs. Right now he's guarding them from the cats. <laughs> Okay, so we have this mess to deal with here. Some of that's fabric though. Got a little Burnley and Trowbridge in there. So these are the bins that I use and these came from Target, I believe. Those other ones behind it um, are the see-throughs and I got those from Joanne, but you can also get them on Amazon. I believe I have a link to them in my store. I will also leave it down below for you if you want these kind of uh, buckets. They are super useful these are the ones that i prefer to deal with because they are a little bit slimmer and easier to put in my garage like situation these ones though have this tray in them i've taken the tray out of this one so i can actually stack more patterns in it but if you have stuff you want to keep in with your patterns that you don't really want to like necessarily have in your sewing room you can use this for that although I normally pull it out and then I just have more room to stack patterns on top essentially. So I need to empty these bins out and then we will start the extravaganza of sorting. I have a feeling that this is going to be a time lapse head of me video. <laughs> so that those ones I just showed you are also like sort of an older model of those. This is what the new ones are, look like. This is the difference. It's like got a flatter top. This has got a more curved top. The top is clear on this one. I'm sure you can find something like this at like Walmart or Target or any of the places that are probably bad to shop at, frankly. Amazon, Walmart, <laughs> Target. Target doesn't seem to be bad, to be too bad, but anyway, uh, you can get these at, at your local place of business of choice. Okay, so here is all the patterns in their entirety. That's a lie. I just realized that <laughs> because there are some back there that I need to actually grab the ones that I'm working on for this skirt right now. But since I'm done with the skirts, I can just stick those back in. So that's not a big deal. So this is what it looks like. Everyone's going to be like, oh, that's not that bad. It's probably a couple hundred patterns. It's really not that bad. I have called this extremely like maybe a year or two ago. And I will also call as I go through right now. Here's me having ultimate regret about updating my phone to get all the newest security patches while I kind of need the list of patterns I have on my phone. Okay, so here is my plan for sorting. I'm going to sort it out by period first. So I have really only 18th century Regency and then Victorian. So that's pretty easy. I'm just going to put those into three main piles. And then from there, I'm going to sort by probably type of garment and by pattern manufacturer kind of at the same time so that all of the skirts by Truly Victorian are all in one spot. <laughs> and then I will put them in date order or number order. And I haven't really decided on that, so we'll figure that out. But let me see what I have, because you also want to like, you have a certain number of bins, which the number is seven, <laughs> uh, but one of them is big four. So you have six bins for all the rest of them. So you want to make sure, like, say I need one for bodices and one for skirts and one for corsets and one for hats and stuff like that. Oh, there are hat patterns, by the way. So if you have stuff that doesn't need to take up its own bin, then you combine them into bins, but you want to make sure that they're like uh, the right sizes to combine the most efficiently, if that makes sense. I need to look at the size of the piles before I decide exactly how I'm going to like subcategorize them. So let me just do a first sort get the big four out so that they're not in here anymore, maybe separate out the hat patterns and then do it by era, I guess. So that's what I'm going to start with.
okay, here's the state of affairs. This guy's hats. This guy's big four patterns, but also just like any random patterns. Like there was a folk, folk wear pattern for a cape, and that's the American Duchess cape, and I printed that out. So I put it in a sleeve, and then I put that there. Uh, here are the rest of the hats. So these are all my hat patterns. So I think that's going to go in one bin. These two piles are corsets. These two piles right here are Regency. That's like a Titanic era dress that I don't, it doesn't really go with anything. <laughs> and then all of the rest of this is Victorian of one flavor or another. So I think I'm going to handle low hanging fruit to begin with to get it out of the way by putting all of the 18th century stuff in one bin, putting all the hats away in one bin and corsets away in one bin. And I actually may add like all other undergarments of the Victorian. So that's hard because then it's not just Victorian corsets either, right? There's stays, there's other stuff in there. So maybe I need to separate those out. Hey, anyway. So I'm going to put these away to try to get it down to like, I just really need to deal with the Victorian stuff and the Regency stuff. I think the Regency stuff could actually go into to one bin also. So let me look into that. Okay, so there were people in the comments that were like, we want to see every single pattern. And I'm like, but eh, really? Eh. I just spent 15 minutes doing the hat patterns. The hat patterns are the smallest pile. <laughs> I'm like, we cannot show every pattern. Like, I, I don't even, I don't even know how to do that in a way that makes any sense. I will put the list of all my patterns down below in the description box. Does that work for you? Like, yikes, this would take forever. Like, this would be the longest and most boring video because I wouldn't even be talking about like interesting stuff. I would just be showing pattern after pattern after pattern of the same writing hat, which is what I just did. And like every, let I me mean, just go to Truly Victorian. I have that, like that website, that's what I have. <laughs> I actually don't have all their stuff, but I have a, like a good, like 70% of it. But we'll talk more about organization, okay? What I am doing is going through my phone while I do this um, to check that everything is in fact cataloged and cataloged correctly in my phone so that I do know what I have in case I ever decide that I want it and I go, wait a minute, do I already have this? Because it's happened more than once. I have one pattern over here that's a Lynn McMaster's arched brimmed straight sided crown hat pattern because it's a riding hat hat pattern. You know I love me a riding hat pattern. Anyway, I have two of these because I did the same thing. So I guess I'm going to give that guy away on Patreon. So that's that's what's happening there. Anyway, I am going to put these away and catalog. And I will put what's cataloged into the description below so you can see what I have. Okay? Is that a good deal? All right.
okay what happened there was exactly what i was talking about the 18th century all of my 18th century stuff fits in it about this much so i was like what could i fit in this much space and i'm like i could fit all my corset patterns um first i went over to grab the 18th century stays patterns and stuck them in here so they would at least be together and i was like mm, i can fit the rest of these in here for people who are wondering i do actually keep my mock-ups um with the correct adjustments and stuff on them in the bag with the stuff so that goes back into with a corrected pattern um if i have it if i don't just turn the mock-up into the if, if it's close enough and i can just take it in a little bit and then the mock-up becomes the regular one then cool but otherwise i i do keep it so this is actually very snug so it won't last very long and i'll probably have to get another bin at some point soon but it's good for me to like try and consolidate these for right now because Victorian is a problem. <laughs> I have so much Victorian. These two are Regency though, so yeah. Okay, you may be asking yourself, okay, but when you go in the garage, how do you tell what's in this bucket? I have a Dymo, so that's what I use. And I make three stickers per one. And I put one on the top, one on a front face, and one on a side face, so it doesn't matter which direction in because there's like multiple ways it could go in the garage <laughs> depending on what shelf it decides to get put on so i just put it on all three so i can always find it and then i take packing tape which is this tiny red thing right here with a tr on it it's tr tuesday for this packing tape <laughs> and then i put packing tape over that so that it doesn't peel off because these come off i don't care what people say <laughs> they totally do but this helps a lot also i was never always this bougie <laughs> So sometimes I would just write it on a piece of paper, cut it real small, and then put packing tape over it to hold it. And fear not about putting the packing tape there, because I peeled off the old ones just now, because these were being used, right? They were just kind of a mess. So I peeled off the packing tape, and they came off just fine. So And it's been on there for years and years, so don't worry, you can still reuse these, and the packing tape won't hurt it. Okay, since I know a lot of you are here because you want to know what kind of patterns I have and what brands are good patterns to look for, I did think I would give you a brief overview of each little section and show you like some of the brands that I think are good to be looking at and stuff like that for getting some patterns. So this is the 18th century. My go-to has always been J.P. Ryan. Uh, these are actual pattern patterns so if you want an actual these are that's what I'm talking about here like if you if you want to go out of a book of course you're gonna go to you know the uh, the American Duchess guide you're gonna go to patterns of fashion you're gonna go to Nora White. you're gonna do all the normal stuff so um, these are just pattern patterns so JP Ryan is my jam her stuff does fit very well it fits exactly like it says it will fit and you buy the pattern by your sizing so I am a size 22 for her and in a lot of sizes actually uh, by the way that translate to translates to a 16 in regular sizes um, so that you guys have some sort of scale <laughs> but you know use this thing I have a ton of her patterns and this one happens to be a Car Caraco 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 I don't know how you say that right um, and then here's a writing habit Fig leaf patterns has also been touted as very, very good. They include, um, you can see a, a ringed binder here. A, I don't know what they call this when you can open it flat. Um, the instructions on fig leaf are supposed to be absolutely amazing. Um, and this is an Italian style gown with a faux petticoat. Um, I think that means that this doesn't, the petticoat doesn't go all the way around. It's actually just part of one dress. So that's that. And then here's Reconstructing History. And I got a chemise a la Ren. This came highly suggested to me as a completely decent uh, chemise a la Ren pattern. Although chemise a la Ren you don't really need a pattern for, but I'm like that. So here we are. <laughs> okay, let's do some corsets. Corsets come from all over the place. There's like... It, it's really hard to tell what corsets are good and bad and it depends on your body and what what you're good at and what you like like for example I love this laughing moon 100 pattern the Silverado you guys have seen it on me you've all been like wow that looks really good on you blah 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 it does not look like this picture which is very straight Kathy doesn't like this pattern I think probably because it doesn't give you very much hip hip spring 
but I don't have very much hip spring and my um, I don't squish very much so this is like the perfect corset for me so my advice is to like find the ones like you just kind of got to try a few and find the ones that work for you and find the instructions that work for you and that you like and do not let anyone else shame you about what corporate corset pattern you like <laughs> so I'll just show you a few of the brands that I have in my collection obviously red threaded I also have a bunch of digital patterns of hers I will try to catalog my digital patterns too and put them in the list that I put down below for you guys um, if you want stays JP Ryan this is one of the best ways to go um, truly Victorian has Victorian corsets I think I have at least two patterns of theirs but there might be more that look interesting I haven't actually this is a lie I have tried this one so I made this corset so oh yeah I made this for my Titanic I liked this corset this was a great corset actually now that I think about that god that was in 2012 so that was eight years ago hi Mantua Maker. I haven't tried any of these. This is a Regency corset, a 65 to 1880 corset, and then an 1870 to 1895 corset. You can see the changes in the way that corsets looked over the years from the Mantua Maker. That's really nice. I, again, have not tried this. These apparently are sold by Patterns of Time. And then here is the Laughing Moon Ladies Regency and Romantic Era corset, long and short stays. Um, that I have made both long and short stays and I have videos all about and reviews so you guys have seen this pattern before so these are great places to buy corsets depending on the area you're looking for these are real places to start okay next up we have hats so this is Denise Nadine designs I have about four patterns from this person and I do tend to like her patterns I think they're very well done um, next we have my dear, who I will always side with, <laughs> Lynn uh, McMasters. Lynn McMasters sells her patterns on her website and she has all kinds of patterns. So this is one of my favorite ones, which is the arched brim straight sided crown hat pattern, which, I mean, I like a riding hat, so I have all of her riding hat patterns. Um, and then she also has, so these are like kind of the old format where they're small. And then she's been printing them in these bigger packaging lately. Um, and this is just a French bonnet jockey pattern. This is from when she took that pattern that had like a million hats in it and broke it down so that it was <laughs> less stressful to try to figure out the instructions. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is a great pattern as well. Truly Victorian does carry, I think, two hat patterns and I have both of them. I haven't tried them, so I don't know. I can't give it to you, but I know other people have told me that this, these patterns are great. Uh, Fashions Revisited has some 18th century cap situations, also bum rolls, stuff like that. This is Timely Tresses. There are a number of lovely patterns in this collection. Um, I think I have, ooh, maybe three or four of these. I really like them. I think they're beautiful. I mean, look at that hat. That's gorgeous. And lastly, Wingio. Wingio. I don't know how to say that but anyway I have um, three or four patterns from these folks they're also sold by patterns of time so patterns of time apparently has a lot of patterns you want to go to so patternsoftime.com uh, to get a lot of different kinds of patterns also Burnley and Trowbridge sells a lot of different patterns from a lot of different makers just in case you're wondering where to get these things but these are some of the general makers that I like who make hat patterns Alrighty, if I use one of these big buckets, I can get all of the Regency in there, which actually makes me think I'm going to try a small bucket too before I label it, just because I want to know if I could possibly get it into a smaller bucket, because then I can use the big ones for Victorian. <laughs> so let me talk to you about brands. My favorite, Laughing Moon, hands down. And the reason that they're my favorite is because they come, <laughs> do you see this book it comes with? It's like spiral bound, that's the word, spiral bound. Um, it comes with a spiral bound instruction manual. Can't beat that. <laughs> so I'm into Laughing Moon. It's my favorite. To be fair, I've only worked with like two or three other ones. So that's a biased answer, but that's my answer. Um, Fig Leaf Patterns has the Spencer pattern and I think a few others that people seem to really like. I think the Spencer is super cute. So that exists. I would be remiss if not to say that my Spencer jacket that I wore in Bath is actually a J.P. Ryan pattern. 
and I got this because I went to costume college and she was pattern testing in the class essentially so I have like a pre-production pattern I don't know if she has this on her website yet but JP Ryan is doing Regency stuff now so at some point this is available <laughs> Um, I'd be remiss if I did not mention Sense and Sensibility, since lots of people really like her patterns. The one that I think is the most awesome pattern ever, it is also hella expensive. I think this thing is like at least $50, but La Mode Bagatelle. It's not being made anymore, so if you want to get it, you have to get it, and it's like <laughs> there's only a limited amount of them that exist at this point anymore. So it has all these patterns in sizes 6 to 22. They are lovely. You get all this stuff for a Regency wardrobe. It's basically like everything you would need to do a Regency wardrobe, including like shimmy sets, um, sleeves, spencers, police can come off of this, a beret, a muff, a reticule, um, and a bunch of different kinds of dresses. So this is an awesome pattern <laughs> like if you are getting into regency this is the one for you so yeah it's expensive i think it's worthwhile okay no it didn't fit in the smaller one and it wasn't actually because of this width it was because these are too long so these are the sense and sensibility patterns and the la mode bagatelle pattern which is treasured so that's fine, it'll just leave me some space to buy more Regency patterns, which is fine with me. Okay, so for organization, I just have this giant mess of uh, Victorian patterns left to go. So the way I think I'm gonna organize them just for sorting purposes, I'll put everything that's not truly Victorian into one pile, and then I'll put truly Victorian bodices into like tops, anything that goes on the top of your body <laughs> um, in one pile and bottoms in another and then like underpinnings and like any kind of, uh, you know, underpinnings, stuff that goes under your <laughs> outerwear, I will put in a different pile because I have three bins left, I think. So that seems like it works. We'll see. We'll see if it works. <laughs> Okay, well, I have questions. <laughs> I don't know how all this fit in there to begin with. They do they do squish a lot more than they look like they're going to squish, though. So these are all the skirts. These are all the bodices and stuff like that. This is all actual underwear. This is, like, belts, parasol covers, collars, cuffs. I don't know what this counts as. Then I have some outerwear right stuff so these could fill in small slots that are open i guess slash go together but that's a lot in the like this is the other category i'm like how did all this fit before i do know that my hats have um extra room in them so there's some chance that that might happen otherwise i might also just get another bucket because you know, having space for some more doesn't ever hurt. <laughs> so, um, I think I might order these in number order. And I need to pull out this one. Actually, it could probably go back in. Because I'm not going to... Like, let's all be honest. Am I going to make this anytime soon? Not really. <laughs> so, I need to pull out the one jacket that I need. Because I'm going to make it next week. And see how this fits into one of the buckets. And see how that goes. This I'm going to put into the big bucket for sure. So, I can do that. I do need to check and see if these are all on my list or not. I think they are because I just take my invoice and essentially put it in there. So I'm going to try and figure out how to arrange these in some <laughs> like sensible way, but I don't know what that is exactly. That might be getting another bucket. We'll see. Okay, so good news. All the bodices fit in one, and I actually probably could fit like a subsection in here, but I'm not. I might just leave it because... That leaves me room for more. We'll see what happens with the skirts. Um, I wanted to talk about patterns and which brands. So obviously, I mean, 
I I'm into truly Victorian. So the reason I'm into truly Victorian is because I like their instructions. Also, their stuff fits me out the gate. Like, I don't really have to do very many changes at all. That is not the same for every single person who tries these, so don't think that that's going to be the case all the time. But it's definitely what happens for me and why I prefer these patterns. But I definitely think everybody has to find the pattern company that works for them. Also, just a pro tip, <laughs> they have some crazy sizing situation where they're like, okay, do all this math. I don't do any of that because I just pull the, the like, I'm an I. Sometimes I'm a J. That's the one thing is these things slide a little bit to, from, you know, your number, your letter may slide depending on the pattern. And I don't know why that is. But anyway, I always cut just a straight size. I don't do their crazy jiggy jiggy thing with cutting different pieces different size it doesn't work for me if it works for you cool it's not my jam but I love truly Victorian just like hands down also black snail patterns has a bunch of Victorian stuff do you recommend I this pattern was had a little bit of trouble but for the most part it was a great pattern to do um, mantra maker does make like patterns for um, Victorian. This is uh, a natural form underdress, essentially. Laughing Moon does also have some Victorian stuff. So, cool. Definitely would recommend Laughing Moon at all times. Also, I think my Titanic dress over there, which is not Victorian in any way, but it's gonna go... I don't know where that's gonna... It's probably gonna go in the big four box because I have extra room there. Uh, that's Laughing Moon as well, and that was, a, that was an easy dress to put together. Honorable mention to this Simplicity Vintage Closet. This pattern is impossible to find. I think I paid like $50 for it. But it is the most bougie, fluffy, ridiculous nightgown, Victorian nightgown I could find. And when we were all going to go to that ball and stay in Bath for the Victorian ball, we had plans to all haunt the halls in our floofiest of floof. And this was going to be mine. So maybe someday. But yeah. Anyway, those are my pattern recommendations. Um, they're consistent throughout all of these eras. So, and also you can just look at my list down below and see obviously which ones I strongly prefer. Another great thing about Truly Victorian is their numbering system. So I have these done in order of number. All bodices are 400s. <laughs> so I just ordered them literally 400 through 490 there's not 90 patterns here but like I put them in the right order and then I could go through my list and the, there my list is in in numerical order here so it's super easy for me to figure out that everything was accounted for here so I think looks like all their over skirts are 300s all their underwear I think is 100 and all their regular skirts are 200s so their numbering system of their patterns is actually really clear and it's very easy to figure out you know which bin you need to be in or whatever one of the questions that came up when i suggested that i might do this was oh my god how do you get your patterns back in the packaging i do not do that <laughs> i just don't um as you can see this pattern i have um done the freezer paper technique too so i will try and link that down below for you i did a video on how to adhere freezer paper with your iron to your um tissue patterns um, you can't get them back in once you've done that and even if I was just using the tissue I just would never just do use a tissue pattern. I just wouldn't um, <laughs> I would destroy that thing like I understand that people are delicate and can handle that. I am NOT that girl I am Godzilla Rampaging through my sewing room. So <laughs> I do what I need to do to protect my stuff. So I use the freezer paper trick Anyway, I do not put it back in there. I put it in a gallon Ziploc bag and I put all the pieces in and apparently even the pencil I used. Um, so I should fish that out. Um, and then what I do do, what I, I said do do, um, I don't know how many times I've said that on this channel. Um, uh, what I do do is put the outside of the package to the outside of the gallon bag. And if I don't have that for whatever reason, except on one particular corset in which I'm an idiot, I will write what that pattern is here. Um, I, it's my JP Ryan half bone stays pattern I have um, a mock-up of in a bag and I haven't marked it. So don't be like me, mark your bag. But also make sure the, the pattern, the outside of the, the case, what is this, bag? No, envelope. 
this is where we're at kids um <laughs> so make sure the envelope is facing this side and not this side because you can't read the numbers and all the text on it from this side i mean you can tell what it is because you've worked with, you've obviously worked with a pattern before but sometimes you want to know some stuff that's written on this um occasionally i will actually rip the pattern envelope in half like i will take the back off of the front and i'll put the back here so that i can read all the sizing and notion information but that's a little excessive, so you don't have to do that. You don't have to do any of this. It's all really just what you want to do. I'm just making this video to show you what I do. No pressure. Huzzah! So I figured out that these can go this way instead of having to lay on their sides like all the other bins. So this is fantastic because these bins are actually taller. So that's great. So I think you can actually... Does it make sense that you can fit more? You can't actually, because what you would do is fit them to the side and then stack them on top, but this way they're all lined up. If you can see though, some of them have their bag tops up and some of them have their bag tops down. And I find that highly annoying. So I think what I'm gonna do now is sit here and change around all the bags so that they all face up because then they don't have any weirdness at the bottom. So I'm gonna do that for a few minutes, fun times. Okay, well, that was annoying, <laughs> but now it's done, and they fit very well. Pro tip, I do not, I sh seal these most of the way, but not all, quite all the way, so that when you squish them, all the air can come out. That helps them fit better, if you're going to use this method. So, the other thing you can do is, like, literally lay on them, <laughs> and, like, mash all the air that you possibly can out of them. But even then, somehow there's always still air in it, so I just leave it open a little bit. You can also poke a tiny hole in the top. That helps let air out too, so that you can get more stuff in. I could actually probably fit a couple more patterns in here, but because I might someday, I'm just gonna call this good. Okay, so it all did fit into this last one. I also thought I was missing a skirt, but I found it. Oh, I gotta put this away. So I just need to tag these guys, and then I'm finished. Woo woo! By the way, I don't really like this one. Uh, with the curved and clear top. I like the other ones better. There's these weird little, I don't know if you can see them right here. You can't really see it, but it like pushes, there's like a plastic thing that sticks out and so it takes up some of the room from your patterns and I don't love that. It's also not as tall as the other one. And um, the other ones that are the same kind, like the Sterilite show throughs, they, see how this one comes in right here and then goes down they don't so you have this much more space and it's not curved as much it's more straight across so you actually get more space out of it so yeah I don't like this one as much okay I did some Amazoning googling that sort of thing mm -mm. I'm not gonna give you a link down below because the only one link that there is is to that one that I don't really love I mean you can get true the Victorian patterns in there and you can definitely get big four patterns in there but like if you had anything larger than that it's not gonna fit and they kind of waste a lot of space I know you did I would keep your eye out because it is holiday time and if you're at one of those stores that we all go to like Target or Walmart or whatever you have in your country or whatever there's a, usually a lot of like storage solutions offered during the holiday day times because people have like ornaments and like Christmas decorations and stuff so look for bins that look like that Bring a large piece of paper or something with you in your pocket so you can just see if one fits you know that kind of thing i would definitely like keep my eye out especially right now for that size of thing so yeah uh definitely worth your while though if you want to have a solution like that i mean there are plenty of other ways to do this you could do it in filing cabinets i've seen people just put them on bookcases i've seen them just throw them into a bin like a giant like one of the bigger ones that you get for all your stuff. <laughs> um, there, There's like a million ways to keep your pattern, so that's just mine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, let me know how you guys are doing, what's going on with you, what you're watching, what you're listening to, all that kind of jazz, and I will see you guys next time with another video, probably working on a mock-up for this bodice. Have a great day, you guys.